The following is one in a series of informational videos focused on assisting brooder units who are producing or plan to produce dual purpose birds. A brooder unit, also known as a mother unit, purchases day old chicks and feed from a hatchery and raises them to 28 to 35 days of age. The chicks have been fully vaccinated by this age and the brooder unit then sells the birds to small holder farmers so they may produce eggs and meat for home consumption or sale. A dual purpose bird is one which produces more eggs and grows faster than the traditional village chicken. Yet the bird's plumage looks the same as the local breeds. For the next 35 days, this is the area where your chicks will spend their time and the objective is to provide an environment where they feel warm, safe and secure. In essence, you as the caretaker are assuming the role of the mother hen and baby chicks will depend on your care to properly grow into healthy birds for your enterprise. It is important for you to create an environment that is a zone of comfort so that chicks seek out feed water and to eliminate stresses that can affect the health and well-being of your chickens. Establishing the zone of comfort begins before your chicks even arrive on your farm. Temperature of the litter and the floor is more important than air temperature. Be sure to preheat the brooding area at least 24 hours before chicks arrive to be sure the floor is warm when chicks are placed. Proper heating, setup and feed water distribution must be ready upon arrival. Remember the chicks have probably endured a long trip from the hatchery and may be stressed when they arrive. Having the ideal environment for them when they arrive will help reduce the stress and get them off to a good start. The litter or bedding for your chicks acts as a cushion or barrier from the floor and absorbs moisture. It is important to have a minimum of 5 cm of bedding across the brooding chamber. If you don't put adequate bedding in the house, it may not absorb and release moisture properly and will become wet and slick. Not only does this create an uncomfortable environment for the birds to walk and sleep on, but increases the chances of pathogens and parasites that can affect your bird's health. If you see wet spots, scoop them into a bucket and discard outside of the house. It is a good practice to walk through and stir up the litter at least twice a week. Make sure all corners of the brooding chamber are rounded off with metal or cardboard. We want to minimize any areas in the house where chicks could pile up on each other. Prior to arrival, you want all water fonts filled and at room temperature and the supplemental feeder trays filled with feed. Chicks cannot regulate their body temperature for the first five days, so supplemental heat is required for them to stay warm. Even if it is 40 degrees outside, the chicks must be able to get warmth on their backs. There are many options on the source of heat, including charcoal pots, gas brooders, or heat lamps. All are acceptable. Use whatever type is available to you. It is important if you use wood or charcoal to light the fire outside of the house and only place the heater in the house when the coals are glowing and not putting off excessive smoke. If you light the coals or wood inside the house, it can give off toxic fumes and heavy smoke that can cause problems to the respiratory tract for both you and your birds. The objective is to create a zone of comfort which is an imaginary circular line around the heat source where chicks have access to feed and water and don't have to go far. If it is chilly outside of the zone then the chicks won't venture out to find the feed and water and will fall behind. You want to make sure that there are no unwanted air drafts that could create cool spots in the house. If you see chicks huddled up and not active Make sure that the area is properly warmed and there is enough heat sources for all chicks to gather around. When the chicks arrive, the target is to have the house temperature at 33 degrees Celsius and then hold at a minimum temperature of 29 degrees Celsius for the first week. 
take extra precautions so that the temperature does not fall below this at night, as keeping your chicks from getting chilled is very important for good, healthy chicks. We recommend having a simple minimum maximum thermometer and record the high and low temperatures each day. Make adjustments if it is getting too hot or too cold. The rule of thumb is to have one heat source for every 100 chicks. If you observe that chicks are surrounding the heat source, but there are chicks still outside of the zone of comfort that appear to be huddling for warmth, add additional heaters. As the birds get past 14 days, the attention switches to keeping the birds cooler. Open window openings to provide as much fresh air as possible and avoid overcrowding. Feed and water management is discussed in another World Poultry Foundation video, but it is important to have feed and water within the zone of comfort so that chicks are comfortable to actively seek out feed and water. The key to early feed management is to provide support to help the chicks find their first feed and then to gradually transition them to the feeding tubes. When the chicks arrive, the heart and lungs are functioning, but the digestive tract is not. It is not until the chick takes its first bite of feed that the digestive tract starts up and begins to function. So getting them on feed quickly is important and creating your zone of comfort is key. Before the chicks arrive, it is essential to prepare the house and to get the feed out. Feeder trays should be full for the first feeding. Go ahead and fill the trays to capacity, even letting it spill over onto the paper for the first feeding. It is important to put paper under the feed trays to prevent feed spillage into the litter. And this also will help attract the chicks to the trays. If the chicks are in their zone of comfort, they will become curious and start finding the main feeders in water. Remember the supplemental feeder trays and chick fonts are the main source of feed and water for the first seven days, but we want to help the chicks transition to the larger feeders. We want to spread the trays evenly across the room with water fonts around them near the heat source. Remember water is essential to move the feed throughout the digestive tract and if there is not enough water, the birds will reduce intake. A good practice is to check the crop full of your chicks after 12 hours. The crop is a little pouch at the bottom of the neck just before the breastbone and the crop should be full and soft. If it is empty, the chick is not eating. If it is hard, the chick is eating but may not have enough water to push it to the stomach. For every 1 gram of feed a chick eats, it will need approximately 2.5 times of water. After 12 hours, randomly pick up 10 chicks and fill the crop. At least 8 out of the 10 should have feed in the crops and after 48 hours, all chicks should have feed in the crop. If the number of chicks with feed in the crop is low, quickly look to see if temperature in the room is warm enough as chilled chicks will huddle to stay warm and won't eat. It is important to have a zone of comfort for your birds so that they are comfortable and will venture out to find the feed and water. It is wise to limit the hours of darkness so that chicks have the ability to eat and drink at will. Chickens have varying eating behaviors, but most are program eaters, which means they eat many meals during the day. If they are in darkness for extended periods of time, they will be off feed too long and will become hungry. When you feed for the first time in the morning, they may pile on top of each other in the feeders and create mortality issues. And the smaller birds may not get the opportunity to satisfy their needs, creating uneven birds. This is why having the proper number of supplemental feeders and drinkers is essential. We recommend having solar lamps throughout the house if electricity is not available. The goal is to have no more than 4 hours darkness. At night the brightness of the bulbs should be that you can visibly see all of the chicks throughout the brooding chamber. Although chickens don't speak our language, 
they do have the ability to communicate with us. Learn to just observe your birds and watch their behavior. If they are spread out with wings drooped and panting, they are telling you that they are hot. If they are huddled together and not moving around, they may be telling you that they are cold. If you walk up to your house and hear them chirping loudly, they are telling you that they may be hungry, thirsty or under some other type of distress. Take time to just sit and observe your birds. The first seven days of a chick's life are the most important for health and productivity of the bird's life. It is essential that we provide an environment that it reduces stress and gives them a zone of comfort to realize their maximum potential. A good way of remembering is to make sure that all of the floors are in place. F standing for feed, L for lights, A for air or temperature, W for water, and S security or sanitation.